And speaking of which, we are fortunate enough to now be joined by TCU men's tennis head coach, Coach David Roditi. Coach, thank you for coming on CR Live. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Can I just say, you sound even better over the phone. I mean, I, I have seen, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. I think the energy you bring is so beneficial to college tennis. So, you know, we we so appreciate having you on right now. Thank you. That's very nice. Yeah, you. but, uh, but that the energy can... I, I was going to say, Rybakov told me I have to butter you up early, but that the flattery <laughs> should end there, and then I have to test you the rest of the way. So we're going to start with a fun first question. You know, you are the coach of a team based out of Fort Worth, Texas. God only knows how hot it gets there right now when you guys are practicing and later on in the year. You know, the biggest takeaway from this year's U.S. Open is it has been hot as hell in New York. And I'm just curious, Coach, you know, in terms of the heat rule being instituted, in terms of, you know, protecting these players, what are your thoughts on how the U.S. Open has carried out thus far? Yeah, I think I think that's a big topic in, in general. We we don't deal with it as much in competition because it's hot here in the summer and most of the guys they're just training here, not necessarily competing. But with with the US Open, you know, the whole everything. The the five sets at Wimbledon is a big topic, the protecting the players playing full full year, all year round. That's a tough, tough Deal. You know, even though we're seeing players have a longer career, I think that's a, a, a major priority of the tour is to protect the players. Um, yeah, I, I, I go back and forth. I'm, I, I can be kind of a traditionalist and, and, and say, well, you know, that's the way tennis is. There's no coaching. But at the same time, we, we have to adjust with the times. And tennis has never been more physical than it is right now. Well, Coach, as I mentioned, you know, the easy questions ended early. Only hard questions from here on in. I love it. <laughs> Great. Bring it on. All right. Well, so that leads me, you know, we're talking about the heat rule in general and, you know, obviously instituted very differently across, you know, junior and then up to college and up to pro, as we saw in the U.S. Open. If you were to talk right now, which do you think is a worse condition to play in? Where you all play in Fort Worth, where it's the worst, or what we've seen in the U.S. Open so far? Oh man, that's a tough, <laughs> tough, tough one. Um, the, you know, the 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 part is not just the heat, but it's it's the humidity sure. that's the dangerous part. So the combination of both, and I I would I would say that the humidity in New York has been worse than we typically see in Dallas. You get down to the Gulf near Houston, and then then that's a whole another ball game. So I, I, I would have to give the edge to New York this last week. Wow. Coach, I, I'm not going to lie. We were we, we had some pre-show uh, bets, and I was so sure you were going to say Texas forever. And, you know, it's too. all about the Texas. So I, <laughs> I like that answer as well. Well, then, you know, let, let's talk about your TCU Horn Frogs. Obviously, you guys are coming off of a year. You, know, you guys had success. But still, you, you guys have had so much success lately. It seems for you guys – you know, round of 16 NCAAs, quarterfinals, that's the goal now. And you're looking at this 2018-2019 season. You bring in Kalamazoo champion and U.S. Open participant. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious, did you get to talk to him at all throughout his U.S. Open experience? And when you have a recruit coming in like that, you know, how do you try and tell them to embrace that experience as preparation for the college season later on? Yeah, well, um, I think that's a hypothetical question because he hasn't <laughs> signed anything. So, uh -oh. so NCA rule, NCA rules wise, I'm not allowed to comment. Okay, so we'll on, say a Benson on... Drooksby <laughs> happened to participate. And no, I'm just kidding. Of course, I don't want to get you in any trouble, coach. But just in general, when you see, I guess then, yeah, when you see, sorry to cut you off, when you see those players play the high level slams, you know, how is that as preparation for the for oh, college? Yeah. Well, you know, we're always looking. We're always looking for players that are used to playing under pressure, and that's what. It, at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to. Those matches in the quarterfinals, semifinals, finals of NCAs is what what you're all, you know, shooting for. So you're, you're looking for players that not only have have had the experience, that have been there before, but that also have had a good experience. And they know they can get it done 
under those conditions. And uh, a player, any player that wins Kalamazoo, any player that makes it to the semifinals of the U.S. Open singles is definitely someone that's proving that they can they can win when the when the chips are down, when the pressure's on, when the expectations, when the cameras, when everybody's looking at you, and you can put everything aside and get the job done. That's exactly what, what we're looking for, and that's a huge, huge, probably the most important part of the recruiting process is, is finding those players that can, that can keep that level under such pressures. Yeah, and you talk about a player of that caliber, a former TCU guy in Cam Norrie who has some success at this U.S. Open, has obviously cracked the top 100, had an amazing first full year on tour. Uh, you know, when, when you know, because a lot of your current team played with Cam. They had that experience. So seeing him have success, I have to imagine that's had a positive benefit on the TCU program, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, and I think, you know, most of the top programs, if not all the top programs, are looking to be able to say, yeah, not only do we do we promise or do we shoot for that, but here it is, we, we, we did it. And so that's, that's the nicest part about it. Uh, obviously, at the end of the day, the player is the one that does it or doesn't do it. I've always been a big believer that, that it's, it's the players that, that, that are – the biggest part, obviously. I mean, so it's great for someone like Rybakov to have had two years with Cameron Nori. And Cameron Nori is still based here in Fort Worth, so he was here before the U.S. Open. He was here after the U.S. Open, so every time he comes back in town, he's got one new little story or one little tip, or they <laughs> they see kind of how his maturity has has uh, how he's matured over the, the last year or two years been on the on the tour so uh they're learning from his mistakes and learning from his successes so it's it's uh, invaluable yeah uh, advantage and, and and information for our players i mean they get to see it day in day out and uh so it's great it's great for the next one just like it is i believe it's the same for for american tennis you know as soon as as soon as someone makes a run to the – someone like Sloan Stevens wins the U.S. Open, well, here comes maybe Madison Keys who's going to win the next one. So it's, it's great to have those peers of you having success, and then, then it kind of feeds off each other. Absolutely. Well, speaking of success, you know, Coach, you are not the worst role model to follow in terms of role models in college tennis. You obviously are a former top 50 ATP doubles player yourself, and – I have a theory uh, that, uh, you know, because tennis players, it's an individual sport, we're, we're a little bit more self-centered than the average athlete. I'm not afraid to say that. But because of that, we have a better memory for our biggest wins and losses. So because of that, I want to take our fans back to May 12th to May 16th, 1997, to a young, fresh on the tour, David Roditi, who wins his first professional doubles title ever in Cardiff, Great Britain. Coach, I'm, I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Do you remember who you were playing doubles with and who you guys beat in the semis and finals? Wow. Um, I'm going to say this. Because, when because, Cam because came on... Just... Sorry, when Cam Nori came okay. on the Cracked Interviews podcast, he had a, an incredible memory for this sort of thing. <laughs> No, I, I actually do have great memory. I mean, I played with, with Paul Robinson. Oh, that's sure. correct. I love it. Yeah, I mean, uh, no doubt. And then um, and I have some worse stories than, than what we won in, the, in that <laughs> tournament. Um, some that I'm not so, not so proud of. Um, man, they might have finals. You know, they might have been... Um, I'm, man, I'll, I'll uh, give you the Nick, first name. The first name of the semifinalists was Johannes and Jan. Unterberger? Does that ring a bell? No. Unter no. I, Unterberger I and Windsor, and then in the final you played Gould and Milligan. Yeah, that I God, I, I, I that, that would have been <laughs> Gould and Milligan were tip of my tongue. I know we played them and they were one of the best teams there. But you know, we did win. We did win in Denmark. Um, I was getting there next, coach. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Of course, I'm glad to hear. Well, then, 
Yeah, here's another fun one. I, I like to ask these hypotheticals, and I don't want to get you in trouble, but y you know, you and your prime versus the current prime Cam Nori. Who's taking that match two out of three sets? <laughs> Oh, in singles, no, no, I have no chance. No chance. Uh, oh, uh, so does that in mean? Doubles, well, <laughs> you know what? In singles, there is a chance. There is a chance. You're getting uh, in his head, coach. I, I know him. I know him way better than he knows me. <laughs> but he would. I would literally. I would literally try this one or two things, and if those one or two things that do not work perfectly, it's like two and two for him. So. Um, <laughs> In doubles, in doubles, God, he's got, he's not gonna like this because he he did win a ATP Tour title, you know, the, in in uh, in Portugal in his first opportunity, and I never won. I lost finals <laughs> five times, so he was definitely letting me know, hey, coach, it's not that hard, you know. I played one time and won it, and played many times, and never won one, so. Uh -huh. I would say in singles, definitely him. And in a close, close match, I would have to give myself an edge in doubles. Obviously, it would depend on who our partners are. But uh, <laughs> I still, at, at this point, I, I, I still think I would get him in doubles. I say we play you and Lopez versus him and Rybakov. Just, I will, you know, Cracked Rackets will sponsor the event. We'll make it a fundraiser somehow. Well, you said it in my prime. <laughs> you didn't say today. <laughs> well, uh, even today, I'm telling you, so Coach... Uh, I was at NCAA's. I saw you serving to the team. You looked good. Well, yeah, I guess I was three quarters of the court and, uh, <laughs> you know, a little fired up about the match coming up. Um, no, you know, obviously, look, you, you see Mike Bryan win the, uh, the U.S. Open at 40. So in doubles, there's definitely, you know, you're not moving a much. Uh, sorry, I'm at the airport, so. No, of course. Well, then, Coach, Two more quick questions, and then we can wrap up. Number one, you know, we uh, because we so appreciate you coming on, and we really do. Uh, talk to us. What are your expectations for the 2019 Horned Frogs? I know the loss against Illinois at the end of the year wasn't exactly how you guys wanted to end. So is there a little fuel in the belly? Are you guys fired up for the 2019 season? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's great to have a guy like Rybakov back. And then the rest is kind of a younger squad. We have Ravikov and, and Reese, Reese Stolder, who's who's been with us for now. He's a senior, so two two very experienced seniors. One one of the best doubles players in the nation with Reese and Ravikov, all American singles and doubles the last couple of years. So great leadership. We're very excited about the guys that are on the team, the new guys on the team. So no no doubt we have high expectations, but. You know, our goal, what's our goal? Our goal is to, to, to get better, to be a better, for everybody to be better in May than they are today. That's the number one goal, just to continue to, to get better and develop. And, and we'll see where, where we end up as far as ranking and all that. As, as you know, we've had a lot of injuries the last couple of years, even though we've had some of our best, best results. Uh, I was counting. We've had five surgeries in two years, which is crazy. Oh, brutal. Yeah. So, of, of starting players. So, hopefully, we stay healthy. We make some adjustments in our in our training, in our rest, in our uh, recovery periods. We added yoga. We added Pilates. We're we're trying it all. So, we we want to yeah. keep these guys healthy. And I, and I I actually think I actually think that's a trend in tennis. I think we'll see different training methods in 10 years, 15 years than, than we are doing today or five years ago. Coach, I threw out my back yesterday. We had a little Cracked Rackets <laughs> tournament where I played my first two-hour session in at least a year. So I'm in on that. I'm all in on the team yoga. I love yes. that idea. Yeah, well, yes. Coach, yes. Uh, we, uh, while well, we've got you on the theme of expectations here, you know, obviously we have the men's singles of the U.S. Open final coming up. Uh, shortly, we got Delpo and Djokovic. Who you got? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you know, my. so I would say that my heart is with Del Potro. I hope he wins it. <laughs> I, it it's, hard to, it's hard to go against Djokovic and with his returns and the way he matches up with Del Potro and his, his win-loss record against, against uh, Del Potro is, is almost too good. So... My brain, my brain is with Djokovic. My heart is with Del Potro. So we'll see. I like to we'll hear. See what's, 
Well then, Coach, yeah. one final question for you. And again, we so appreciate you taking the time to come on our preview. Uh, I, you know, Reese Stalder, a guy you mentioned, it's interesting because for me, when I was at NCAAs uh, and I, I got to go there for the round of 16 in the quarterfinals, his was a game I fell in love with. So what do you think about this pro comparison? Reese Stalder and Robin Hassa. I think they have very similar games. I mean, obviously to different degrees, but very similar. Am I crazy? No, no, no. no you're not crazy. You're not <laughs> crazy. Reese, Reese is very explosive. Uh, he's, he's, he can have, he, you know, the, the comments that we're making with him and, and the goal for this year is that his good days versus his bad days are, there's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And, when he's when he's playing and he's doing what well, you know he's feeling it, he's beating guys like Ronnie Schneider and, a, and a, he beat he beat um, uh, Altamirano this summer in a pro event and then Altamirano qualifies at U.S. Open so that just shows you his huge upside. We you know we're with you. We we love his game. We love that's why he's he's at TCU. He wasn't a huge huge name or a huge recruit in in you know. He wasn't top ten or whatever in the juniors, so we're we're very excited at what he can do, and he he could be our our X factor. He could be that sleepy guy that's played five, four, five, six for us. That could maybe step up and play number two or one for us. Absolutely, I, I completely agree with you, Coach. I also just. Something about the forehands. I think their forehands look identical. I really do. And and you said I'm not crazy. I may have. To, I think Jamie would disagree. I think he would say I'm crazy. But the one thing I'm crazy about, Coach, is you you being willing to come on this live show. So we really appreciate having you. You know that was my best at tra- uh, attempt at a segue. So you know, sorry you had to put off with that. But thank you so much for taking the time to come on our CR live show. And you know, hopefully we'll be able to check back in with you throughout this college season. Anytime, Dolan. It's great to be back in, and, and I guarantee you there's not a college coach in Division One that has more cracked rackets than I did as a player. Oh, so, okay, well then. Yeah, I'll, you, leave, I'll leave you with that. No, 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 no. you can't. Uh, that's too much of a tease. I need to know your best cracked racket story. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> honestly, you don't have enough time. <laughs> Fine. That, in that, this that, segment, I mean, I just, it, I, that's not, I mean, it's definitely not the most proud side of of me, uh, you know what, what? You know the whole thing with Serena, what she did. Obviously, she lost it, and and completely for someone so so experienced, she completely lost it, and and I'm sure she'll reflect back and and realize that. But uh, there was part of me that could really sympathize with her frustration yesterday. Uh, not not that what she did was right. It's just I could relate to her. So that's uh, that's definitely something I'm always working on. Uh, I, I do have a cracked racket in my, on my on my wall in my <laughs> office. And the fun, the funny story was, I completely destroyed this racket in the locker room in San Jose after we lost in the quarters. I was not happy about it. A buddy of mine, uh, Steve Johnson, who's a coach, uh, Ryder Johnson's dad, Jackson. I mean Ryder Jackson, Steve Jackson, uh, sends it to Wilson saying, you know, there's a defect on this racket. They send it back with a very formal, very uh, well-written letter saying, you know, due to extensive testing, we believe that this racket might might have been, you know, exposed to the ground and a few pulse or something like that. It's a really funny letter, so it's in a frame, and that's my... That's the story that I'll, uh, I'll leave I love with. it. Well, then, Coach, I reserve the right to bring you back on to hear more of those stories later on in the year. Fly safely, and again, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Don. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, great. Appreciate Pleasure it. to be here. Take care, Coach Rodini. Thank you.